We've beaten Burnley at Old Trafford. That is a curse I wanted to go in that game. And it's a curse that's gone in that game. Man United 3-1 winners against Burnley there. It was a tough game. It wasn't a very inspiring game in the first 45 minutes. The game exploded into life in that second half. And Mason Greenwood getting the two goals that made all the difference. Edison Cavani getting the third right at the end. Two beautiful goals in that game from Manchester United, by the way. A set piece that we concede again. But it doesn't matter. United won. United did it overall quite comfortably in that game, I think. We're now eight points behind City and 21 is coming. I mean, it's not, but hell, why can't that be what United are aiming for now in the Premier League? We're just we're very we're so good going forward at the moment. We really are. And the two goals that we scored in that game, beautiful. They can go into a textbook. The first one, United just the, the movement, the passing, and the, look, the first 45 minutes you can sum up very quickly. We played Fred and McTominay. We were sat too deep. Gary Neville was pointing out in the commentary. McTominay and Fred were almost dropping so deep that they were full backs. It wasn't working. You don't need two defensive midfielders against a team like Burnley that sits so deep. You need a playmaker that sits deeper, like Paul Pogba, that can come and orchestrate the game from a deeper position. That's why we need a defensive midfielder so badly, and you know how I feel about that. That changed in the second half. Excellent sub by Solskjaer that was necessary. Cavani on for Fred. And it made the difference between three minutes. United went forward, went forward beautifully. An excellent goal on Mason Greenwood. The star boy has returned. Mason Greenwood has now broken Wayne Rooney's goal-scoring record as a teenager. Is it at United or at the Premier League? Let's have a look at that stat. I think it's at... Mason Greenwood has equaled Wayne Rooney's Premier League goal-scoring record before the age of 20 with 15. And he can break that. Mason Greenwood, I'm really happy for the lad. He had a really tough year with what happened with Phil Foden and England. Well, he broke into the England team and then it all kicked off and he was kicked out of the team. And he had a personally a very tough year, I think, with the death of a friend. Mason Greenwood's progressed and matured as a striker. Anderson Cavani being in that squad, I think, is helping him a lot. And Greenwood, in his own right, is earning his place back in that team and offering United an actual genuine threat from the right-hand side. And he was the man that made the difference today because United from set pieces are crap at defending. Me and Tarkowski causing United all sorts of problems with balls into the air. And it was a, it was just sloppy from United. It was sloppy from Henderson all game, really. it was. He seems that like he doesn't trust his centre-backs enough that they're going to win the headers. So he just decides to come storming out of his box when he's nowhere near it. Kind of lucky that we didn't concede that goal early on after 20 seconds. We did concede it, but it was offside. Scratched out. But as that game went on, you get towards the last 10, 15 minutes, I thought Burnley were looking like the most likely team to score. United weren't in any real total control. United were struggling. Burnley got into the game, very disciplined team. You know what you're going to get against a Sean Dyche team. And we got it again today. And I thought they looked more likely to do it. But United in the second half are a different beast to United in the first half. We've shown it so many times this season. It's not a coincidence anymore. It's just a habit. We're just better in the second half of football games. Simple as that. And it worked out again for United today. As I said, look, it might have been a little bit fortunate that Greenwood got the deflection. I think it was off me or Tarkowski. I'm not sure who it was. But deflected it went in. But you, you make your own luck in life. I don't really like the, the idea of luck because you have to make your own luck. You have to put yourselves in those situations. And we got lucky because we forced ourselves into that situation. And the third goal, though, was not lucky. And somebody who was heavily involved in that, and I think deserves a shout out here, is Donny van der Beek. I think it's his birthday today. He came on last, what, seven minutes involved in both goals. He'll be happy with that little cameo. And it's un it's unfortunate for Van der Beek because it, when you don't have that many opportunities, you have to really excel and shine when you get your opportunities. I think he excelled and he shone with his opportunity today. <laughs> now, so many people really want to see Van der Beek... Um, say, play instead of Fred in a double pivot in midfield. I don't think that would ever happen. That's not really the sort of midfielder that Van der Beek is, and I don't think it's the sort of midfielder that Solskjaer will trust in that position. But again, it's why we need to sign a top-class defensive midfielder so we can just play one and let someone like Donny or Pogba or Bruno just focus on going forward. But happy days. You know that Now, United have actually got a week off. I think this going into this week now, it's the first time that United haven't had a midweek game, I since like the lockdown, well, football returned from lockdown. And for players like Rashford, who again today for me, 
I mean, he was sharp in certain areas, but Rashford seems to he's lost that uh, that tiny little final touch. I think I would say his skills and his footwork are still there, but Marcus Rashford, in terms of the actual direct threat, it's not there at the moment. And I think Rashford's really suffered with the amount of football he's had to play this season. But United are eight points behind City in the league, and after City came unstuck against Chelsea, it it makes them vulnerable. They're not this immortal team who's going to go on and win a quadruple. Hell, you're not even going to win the damn treble, guys. There's only one team that's ever going to do that. But why not go at City now? Why not really go at City? Our next games, I think, if I'm correct, we've got Leeds coming up next Sunday. Then we're going to have Roma midweek. Then we've got Liverpool. And then we've got Roma again. If United can come out the the end of those four games with wins. Hell, beat them all. Beat Leeds. Really steam Roma in the first leg. Gives us an easier second leg so we can focus on the Liverpool game. Why can't we think this year that we can go on to win the Europa League and do a mega upset and beat City? Look, I think City right now, compared to where we were in 2012, where we were eight points clear with six games left and they went on and we know what happened with Aguero. Let's get some fucking revenge. Let's, let's go. Let's do it. Why not? I know it won't happen, but that's got to be the message that Solskjaer is pushing in that dressing room because United really need to push for that. That's what I want to see. I want to see it. Look, Paul Popper again today um, on an individual performance. I'm really, really loving how influential he is. I love seeing him being the player that receives the ball five yards, ten yards in front of our box and the player who runs forward. Because watch him pull Popper in full stride. It's glorious. Really graceful footballer to watch when he's in full swing. And today, he wasn't in full, full swing, but he was instrumental. He was helping it tick in the middle. And it's just beautiful to see. And when you've got players like Popper in form, you've got players like Bruno Fernandes, who still really isn't in that, I don't think, that incredible form, but still influencing games. And you've got Mason Greenwood bagging up, bagging two. And then you've got Cavani coming off the bench and scoring again. And you've got Donny van der Beek doing that. United are so have so much threat going forward at the moment that we don't need to keep clean sheets to win, which, which helps, I think, because I don't think that there still isn't the true belief in our centre-backs. There still isn't the true belief from our goalkeeper in our centre-backs. There still isn't the true belief in our centre-backs in our goalkeeper. And until that... Until our defence trusts itself, how can the rest of the team trust them? And that's what I think is going to happen between now and the end of the season. It's all about our attack. It's all about Mason Greenwood. Six goals he's been involved in his last six games. Marcus Rashford might not be scoring, but he's still somehow involved all over the pitch. And Edinson Cavani has proven to be the best number seven that we've had in a long, long time. So I'm glad that curse is gone. And the Burnley at home curse is gone. Oh, that was a horrible stat. But United there, three points, ultimately very comfortable. Two goals we scored in that game can go straight into a textbook. Beautiful football, great teamwork, great movement and great runs. It wasn't a, a, an incredible 90-minute performance because the first 45 was completely forgettable. But you could say that about United so much this season. But three points is all that matters there. And with eight, we're now that we're eight points behind City, let's go at them. Imagine, just imagine that this year turned out to be 21. Hell, that's the message that Solskjaer needs to be getting across to those players in the dressing room because we do have an opportunity if City continue to give us opportunities. Let's see what happens in the league. But who is your man of the match? For me? Just, there's no way you can look past Mason Greenwood, surely, in my opinion. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. But 3-1 winners against Burnley. Really happy to see Greenwood get those goals. Really happy to see that Solskjaer changed the game at halftime by taking Fred off because we didn't need two defensive midfielders and that allowed us to have that second half. But let me know what you think in the comments below and do you think that there is any chance of 21 coming home?